<laughs> Thanks, Mimi. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome. We're in day two of the Make for Tomorrow Festival, um, which is, if you haven't been here before, a massive warm welcome to you, as is a massive warm welcome to everyone who's who's um, coming to join us this afternoon. So Make for Tomorrow is this really brilliant online participatory arts programme. We've got some fabulous visual artists that have been brought into the programme by the wonderful Hospital Rooms, which is a great organisation. If you've not heard of them, do let them up. I'll be passing you over to Phoebe in a little minute and she can tell you a bit more about them and then we've also got a performance and writer so lots of actors and writer strands who've been doing some really interesting in conversations with each other um, and you guys um, and that's come through our brilliant other art partner called Arts Over Borders so we're in our finale week so it's the festival so we've got amazing events happening every day and we are so happy to have the fantastic artist Bindi Bora with us this afternoon it's so exciting now um do you know what? I'm just going to shush and I'm going to hand over to Phoebe and she can tell you exactly what's going to happen and what you need to do. But just to reiterate people, this is an interactive workshop so you can get involved. Please, there's a little button underneath your screen which says ask Bindi a question. So at any point, if you've got any comments, tell us how you're feeling, tell us what you're thinking or you've got any questions, please do press that button and type in what you want to tell us because we love, 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 love to hear from you. All right, I'll hand over to you Phoebe. Have a great time everyone and I'll see you at the end. Thank you, Lucy. Um, and uh, you probably recognize me from the Tuesday workshops, but I'm Phoebe. I work with Host Rooms as a project curator. And we have loved being part of Make for Tomorrow um, and especially running these Tuesday afternoon sessions. And we're super lucky to have Bindi Vora with us today for our finale session. So we will, um, I'll hand over to Bindi in just a second and we can get um, started right away. Um, but as you know, Hospital Rooms are a um, charity and organisation that transforms um, medical settings with incredible um, artworks and acclaimed artists. Um, just a few housekeeping rules. This is being, um, this will be recorded. You can live stream it. You'll see Bindi and I, but we know that lots of you are watching out there. So please do, as Lucy said, ask a question with the button that's underneath the screen. Um, and that can be a, a question about Bindi's work. It can be a question about the process. It can be a comment or a thought or an idea, anything. Please do send those in to us. And then if you scroll right down to the bottom in the blue, in the blue banner, you can upload the artworks that you make for this session and then we'll share those with Bindi afterwards. Um, that's all from me. So I'm gonna hand over to Bindi um, and she can explain more, but thanks everyone. Um, it's been a delight to do these Tuesday sessions with you. Hi everyone. It's so nice to kind of be here with you all today. I know I can't see you, but I'm looking forward to seeing all the collages you make today. I thought before we get into the short slideshow I've, present, I've kind of prepared to show you some of the materials we're gonna be working with today. And so we're hoping to end up with a collage or several. And this is just a couple of examples that I've made before the workshop as to how we can kind of put these together. And you should have received a link to download some images. And there's a choice of about 11 photographs in there. And you can use any, any one of these. There's no hard and fast rules. So you've got your collages, you've, um, your images. You've then got some markers, hopefully that you can use any color, no kind of preference on that, up to you. Um, stickers is kind of what I've put on there. So any shape of sticker in lots of different colors. And if you don't have stickers, you can either simply draw on a shape or, or if you've kind of prepared um, some painted pieces of paper, you can kind of stick them on. And although I've put print stick on there, I'm using a kind of different glue that we can use. Um, scissors or you can try tearing uh, text. And then I've kind of chopped out a few words here just to show you some examples of how we're gonna be using text, but any magazines or any newspapers that you have lying around, I have a copy of ES here, which I'm gonna be delving into and chopping things out of. So that's the kind of material list for now. Um, I'm gonna share my screen so we can kind of go straight into this uh, artist presentation that I've put together. So these are kind of examples of how different artists have used text and photographs in them, in their work. And I think they're a good selection of artists who employ uses of language and image as a way of looking at meaning, emotion, and describing different statements, whether it's political, social. And I think those are kind of interesting touch points as we consider the collages that we're gonna to make today. 
Um, the first is by artist Jim Goldberg, who produced a series called Open Sea. And it was a long-term documentary project he made with people um, who had migrated to Europe through migration, immigration, or trafficking. And he worked collaboratively with those that appear within the image, images. And so what he would do is he would take Polaroid photographs of them, and then he would offer them to the individuals to then inscribe with marker pens. And often they would use uh, language or pattern, and it would be about inscribing their thoughts or their emotions related to that particular moment in their life. The second artwork is by Shirin Neshat, who uses um, complex layers of identity language and looks at how, so, how society can inform a lot of these ideas. Um, since being exiled from her home country of Iran, Neshat began a series of works in which she uses Farsi poetry on the hands, faces, and feet of the portraits that you see here. Um, and they're almost these kind of delicate veil-like patterns that she creates using language um, on top of the um, images that you see. And it, it talks to these complexities of identity and belonging and where they come from. Uh, the third artist is Sylvia Rossi, who made a body of work called Encounter. It looked at the, um, it looked at her family album in which she restaged images of her mother from Togo in which she used to work as a market trader at, uh, in Togo. And each photograph that you see is a self portraiture, is a self portrait in which she kind of looks at migration and diaspora. And she almost reperforms these images. Underneath, I know it's a little bit small, but you see this kind of repetition of text that references a lot of the objects that appear in the works. And so this idea of repeating text and repetition, I think is really important um, in Sylvia's work. John Baldessari created a series called the Goya series in 1997. And although the kind of text and images appear quite banal and straightforward, actually the words that he's taken are from the uh, iconic Francisco Goya etchings from 1810 to 1820, that's when the originals were made. And it looked at the violent depictions of combat, but using these incredibly sanitized uses of language. And so what Baldessari has done is extract elements of this and begun pairing it with, a, with an image. Um, Adam Brunberg and Oliver Channerin are two uh, artists who use selected pages from the International New York Times newspaper. And each newspaper is screen printed by them and often the uh, text that appears are this kind of chronology of their influences and ideas as they're making other work. The image on the right was released in May in order to raise money for a health clinic in South Africa to um, acquire necessary PPE equipment for patients and staff in different clinics across South Africa. So uh, often they're moments that mark really key and important things in their, in their kind of day-to-day -day lives. Um, Gillian Waring, this is quite an iconic series that was made in the early 90s, in which she stopped hundreds of passers by in London and invited them to write whatever they wished on a white card, which she then photographed with them holding up. And this kind of idea of reflecting someone's identity is quite interesting because there was this kind of unsettling idea between how the individual appeared and what they were writing kind of came across. And I think that reveals so many of the kind of innermost um, emotions and feelings about an individual that they're then projecting onto the camera, which I think is a really interesting way of thinking about how we use language. Barbara Kruger made this piece in 1989, and she often uses phrases and images, creating these kind of negative double exposure pieces uh, to challenge ideas of power, identity, and sexuality. And this particular image was made by Kruger in, in the late 80s, uh, for the Women's March in, in Washington in support of reproductive female rights. So I think this is, you know, this is an example of how politics um, and words and language and image can have a real impact on how we kind of move forward uh, with different things and different issues that are happening around us that affect all of us individually and, and kind of on a mass level. And then the last work I'm going to show you is is a really interesting one. It kind of turns this idea of image and text on its head slightly, and it's by an artist called Sam Winston. Um, his, his whole practice is, is kind of centered around how language doesn't have to just be a carrier of messages. It can also be adopted as a visual form. So what he does is he often repeats certain letters in different scale and different tonalities with a pe pencil. 
and he creates these distinctive typographies that when you look at them individually, you could kind of see the um, makeup of each of the images, but on a kind of mass level, when you zoom out of it, you see a pattern forming, an image forming. And I think that's a, another way of thinking about how words, phrases, symbols, patterns can kind of be formed together to uh, create a visual, uh, a visual kind of story. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And I think if there's any questions, we can kind of go through them. If not, I think what would be really interesting to do for the first exercise, I'm gonna break it down a little bit, is to take your magazines or your newspapers and go through them. And I want you to kind of think about different words that appear within the kind of articles or, or kind of resources that you're looking at and begin cutting or tearing out certain words. The words or the language that we're going to be putting onto these collages don't have to be, um, they can be anything basically. It doesn't have to be a prescribed way of looking at something. It could be how you're feeling today, what the weather is like today, um, or if there's a kind of phrase within the articles that you have there or the magazines that you have there that you're kind of interested by, it could be quite provocative or quite conversational. Cut those out and put them on the side and then we'll look at the images and see how they can work together. So Bindi, we, ha we have had a um, question just mm -hmm. saying that the, that the presenta presentation was really illuminating and looking at what kind of um, artworks have come about through artists using text and image. And um, just wondering where you situ situate yourself as an artist who works with text and sort of image as well, um, where you would sort of see yourself and what themes um, you have in your practice. Yeah, so for me, I think, especially now, as we're kind of in this uh, landscape of lockdown and a lot changing around us, for me, language became really important because I felt that a lot of the things being shared were, were quite um, provocative in a, in a very negative way. For me, it created a lot of, lot of anxiety um, around, you know, the, what's happening with COVID, how that affects us all. And that's kind of how the series that this, this workshop is based on, Mountain of Salt, was, was born from this idea of collecting language. And often the language was collected through um, articles I'd been reading or, or kind of daily briefings that Boris Johnson was um, broadcasting. And I began kind of writing down aspects of what, what different people were saying and began collecting it. And for me, the use of language has this power of transforming, but it also has a moment where we can kind of really stop and think about what happens next or what we do with these ideas and with these resources. And I think for me, that became the element of where something then transforms into becoming something else, especially when it's like paired with an image. There's the kind of visual uh, cue that you have of what you're looking at, but also the text. And I think the two together create this really powerful impact of how, how we read something, how we understand something. So that's for me is kind of how I use language within my work, especially this new body of work that I've been making. Up. So let's see. I, uh, I've already prepared a few things. So I hope everyone is kind of thinking about what they can do. And I think you can see here, I've pre-prepared a few things. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna begin looking at all the different words that I have. They, you know, for me, the sentences or the language doesn't always have to make sense. It doesn't always have to be a fully formed paragraph of something. It can just be an individual word. It can be several words that kind of provoke a thought or an idea. You know, like, let's see what we have here. So expanding within public could be the starting of something. It doesn't have to be, you know, with this example college, collage that I've made, you know, it wasn't it, the sentence, you know, grammatically doesn't actually make sense, but it's how the words are used and how they're strung together that makes the most sense. So the new me being human. I think there's a really interesting touch point in there um, that we can take from these ideas or like with this one where I've kind of used a marker to write the word limbo on. And it's this idea that the world is in limbo at the moment 
And I think this pairing of the kind of animals as well with the, within the image provokes a different idea. So there's a few examples of how, you know, the sentence structure doesn't have to make complete sense. It can be something that is um, an emotional response, something that you're thinking about at the moment. Um, you know, it can be your feelings, it can be emotions, it can be just, you know, it can be a statement as well. So I'm gonna try and turn these all over. because they're all a little bit mismatched. And let's see what we have. So, somewhere, here we go. Somewhere, the inhabitants. Supposedly, how have we got the word R here? If not, <laughs> let's see if I've got the word R in my magazine. I think with all the examples that I showed you, um, you know, it shows the different way that artists have used language as a, as a not just as a description of, about something happening, but also as a kind of um, layering of a pattern or an idea. And I think that's what's really interesting about someone like Shirin Neshat's work, for example, how she uses the Farsi poetry as this kind of pattern almost on top of the photographs. And often by combining it on the kind of bare hands or the feet or the face, these are often in um, Islamic culture, the uh, parts of the body that are seen or visible to people. And so by using these same elements of the body as well, it creates a different kind of gesture or performance within the work itself. We had another, we've just had another question come in um, asking whether you gather words over a period of time or sit down with a specific feeling or thought and go from there. I keep gathering, you know, at the moment with this second lockdown that we're in, um, I've been paying close attention to a lot of the news, not just with COVID, but also, of course, with the election um, in the US. And there's a lot of inflammatory language. And so what I do is on my phone in the notes section, if there's something that kind of piques my interest or curiosity, I just kind of either take a screenshot or I pause whatever's on the television and then I write it down. And so it's this kind of constant journaling of these words. I don't keep a track of exactly where they come from because I don't think that's important. I think it's this accumulation of these texts and these phrases that when they're then extracted from there, it really highlights how a lot of the language can be provocative in different ways. Um, you know, for example, I think Trump said after he kind of recovered from COVID, where he said, I'm back because I'm a perfect uh, physical specimen. And I thought that was a really interesting thing for someone to say mm -hmm. about a virus um, and mm -hmm. how he's kind of recovered from it. I thought that was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I've just taken this out. I thought this was quite interesting and I might just use that as it is. But you see, you can kind of go through your your papers and your, and your newspapers and look at what's there. I'm still looking for the word R. It doesn't seem to be <laughs> in this magazine, surprisingly. If you can't find a whole word, it might just be something that you construct and you've cut out from different, different words. So for example, I'm gonna take the word restaurants from here and I'm going to take the word letter R. And we just had another question as well asking, um, do you ever begin the process in reverse, allowing the image to lead the words that you will cut out? I haven't, because I think with this body of work, it is mainly about the, the language. The language is the anchor in, in this particular body of work. And, you know, the images are not images I've taken either. So these are found images often, collected through um, eBay or uh, through uh, copyright free libraries where there's kind of historical images and kind of licenses that, that you can use in order to put together um, these kind of compilations of things. So 
the images then aren't images I've taken either. And I think there's an interesting moment there because a lot of the images that I've kind of used are all different forms of images. Some are, are medium format kind of uh, negatives or they're stereoscopes or they're kind of um, used for identifying different tax, uh, taxonomies of objects. So whether that's in an archive for scientific usage. And what I do is I then take the images as the after I've kind of collected the language and I begin to kind of sift through this archive of things that I have. Um, and I then begin to pair the visual with, with the words. So often it, the language has to come first in order to kind of provoke a visual in my mind as to how something could read or, or what that could do. So you can kind of see here how you can use different scale as well in order to put together sentences. And also if there's something that you just want to write, you can write directly onto the images as well. Hmm. Um, you don't have to do the whole cutting out of, of words or sentences either. So if there's a, you know, if there's a particular poem or there's something that someone said to you recently that's, you know, provoked you or resonated with you or kind of stuck in your mind, you can also think about that and use your markers as a, and write directly onto the surface of the image. Um, supposedly, friend. There we go. We've got a, a little bit of a sentence there. <laughs> Um, so I think maybe if, if everyone is kind of ready to move on, we can kind of look at the, the image pack um, and see what kind of takes your fancy from there. So there was a, there was a choice of a few, few things. And, you know, think about the sentences that you've put together and which image kind of really speaks to that. So, for example, I'm just going to make some space here. You know, you've got this, this really curious image of a spread of different pies and pastries, um, which could kind of, you know, if we take this combination of words, so expanding. That's just out of the screen a, a little oh, bit. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Is that better? Yeah, maybe a bit more to the left. And yeah, that's great. There we go. Move these over. So for example, this could be something. Or we can kind of look at another image. So I'm going to move this onto the side for a second. Just like that and go back to the image pack. Um, the shapes that I've kind of asked you to prepare or the stickers that you've collected are important because what they do is not, it, you know, it becomes not just about the image and the text, but the shapes are this adding a kind of direction for the gaze that, of which you're, you're looking at something. You know, if you want to direct someone who's looking at your collages to a certain thing in the image, the stickers or the shapes can often be a really good way of doing that. It also adds an element of color into the work because uh, the images are black and white. More often than not, the text will be black and white. Um, and this kind of pop of color not only adds a resonance within the frame that you're, you're working with and not only directs your gaze, but the idea of circles, for example, the, the symbolic meaning of circles is about unity, togetherness, and kind of this bond. And squares are about structure, about um, stability, about, you know, these, these kind of meanings of these shapes also have a, a second reference on top of the collages that you're making. So it's not just about the visual and the language, it's also about the way in which these shapes can be there to direct you, but also the underlying meaning of what the language means and communicated in a different way. So that's that's why we have the shapes. Um, let's see which one. I to say as well, if anyone wants to tell us what they what kind of words that they've come up with, do drop them in the or um, in the question box too, and then we can yeah have a think collectively as well. Definitely. And there's no pressure on what you, you know, if you want to do a one word statement, you can kind of do a one word statement as well. If 
quite like the seal. The seal is kind of interesting. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna use this image here. This image with the hands. I think there's something really interesting happening with the kind of very subtle gestures that she's making here with, with the hands. So I'm gonna use that. And I'm gonna take this sentence that I've made up here. And the way in which I would kind of start the, the kind of collage process is, you know, first to think about where the where the language could sit. Does it sit on the image or does it sit underneath? Um, I think for the purpose of kind of visibility, um, I'm gonna set it on the image itself. I think that could be really interesting. And what I wanna do is I wanna figure out how long the sentence is, especially because I've got this oversized word here. So I wanna make sure that it's all gonna fit, but maybe actually it could sit slightly off off the page a little bit. That could be interesting because then the white adds another layer and it focuses your attention in a slightly different way. So I think I'm gonna go with that. So I'm gonna take my print stick and I'm gonna apply some glue to the back. And I'm just to say we've had someone um, just comment on what they've, what their um, words are. Um, and they are the words perpetual mm. plus true story. A perpetual true story, interesting. That's, there's something within that, right? Which image, I'm curious to know which image that they've paired it with mm. or are thinking about pairing it with. Yeah, do let us know. I think with, you know, any form of collage, it, what I like about it is, is there's a freedom of expression. You know, there's, there's no right or wrong when you collage something. If you feel like it's not working, you can simply put something over it or you can kind of color over it or you can use the stickers over it. I think that's the kind of freedom with this kind of form of making work which I think is really interesting. So if you're choosing to write on top of your images, that's fine as well. Um, okay, so I've got the kind of bare bones here ready. So somewhere the inhabitants are supposedly friend. Doesn't quite make sense, but there's something I think in there that provokes a thought. And I think with the, the hands that you see here um, and the way that the hands are kind of posed, I think there's something interesting happening. What I wanna do is I wanna look at my stickers. I often work with, when I'm thinking about the use of the stickers and any kind of colored elements is restricting for myself the, the amount of color that appears. Because I think for me, having a set palette of two or three different colors gives a sense of structure and I think I'm quite uh I I need I need structure you don't all have to follow this but that's how I kind of work through things otherwise I feel like the visual becomes a little bit too um too lost within all the different colorful elements um also the person that um had found those words um perpetual the words perpetual or a true story um, is thinking about using image 10, which is the picture of the tent, which I think is a really apt image for the sort of veiling yeah. and truth and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, this, this one here, it's a great image. I think there's, yeah, I, I like, what I like about it is it's this kind of Victorian tent. And this is, I, I'm, if I remember correctly, it's an early stereoscope image. And so they're only originally like about this big. And so the scale is kind of distorted as well. And I think the kind of awnings that you see at the top and this kind of fabric, I think there's, yeah, definitely something in there. Curious to see your collages after. So colors, colors. Phoebe, do you have any favorite colors? I do love a yellow at the moment. I'm not that sure. That yellow? This is yeah. kind of a yolk yellow. yellow. <laughs> oh, we've got a bright yellow. No, too bright. <laughs> Do you <laughs> I like the first one actually, the less fluorescent. Yeah. One. I'm also a little bit into metallics at the moment. I don't know why. Maybe it's the magpie in me that's making me a little bit kind of drawn to the shiny. 
materials. I mean, I've got I've got a lot of different colors here, and I think it's just because I like the options. Teal as well, the teal. Is nice. <laughs> the blue is nice. Yeah, the teal, the one next to it. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, there's lot. There's kind of lots of different options, and I think if you've painted your your shapes, you can kind of be creative with them because it means you can probably cut into them if you want to vary the scale. So for example, the squares that I have, they're much smaller in, in scale in comparison to the circles. And I think that's okay because it gives some variation within, within the image itself. I think what I might do is the yellow and the gold. And I think the pink. I think that's what I'm going to do, but let's have a look at the squares now. You can choose to use as many shapes as you want. Um, sometimes I use, if I'm only using smaller shapes, then I might use six of them or so, but that there's no hard and fast rules. Um, and if I'm using a variety, then obviously taking into consideration the scale of the actual image and then the scale of the shape, you kind of decide how you wish to to kind of use them you could almost use them as like a border as well if you wanted to do that to draw focus right into the image or you can kind of place them on top of the image as well let's see I might use the I know I'm going to do had, um, just another question asking did, uh, did Bindi ever use those packs of words as fridge magnets? We've just dug these out and are starting using them too. <laughs> I don't remember those. Yeah, yeah, I think as a kid, I used to spend time at my mum's place, kind of, you know, on the fridge and moving things around. Maybe, maybe mm. it's kind of come from there, this interest of piecing together things. But those are a great way of kind of mm. testing or using language and words because that really made you think about you know, and often you'd lose one or two pieces. So then sometimes things don't actually make quite as much sense as you thought it would. Um, but yeah, those are, yeah, I remember those very, very well. Yeah. We okay. just had, um, sorry, say that again. Vin. Go on, you go. Oh, we just had someone else just saying what they're using. Um, they're using the phrase in a pickle and the word mm -hmm. generation and whatever. And they think they're going to use image eight, which is all the piled up plates. Yes, nice. The kind of mess of the uh, post-dinner party. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, when you're making any of these collages, you can be as creative as you want. You can kind of pare things right down or you can kind of use everything that you have. Um, and so I'm going to start with a sticker. I think I'm kind of ready to begin playing with the shapes on the images. Um, and as I mentioned, you can kind of use them to direct around what you're seeing in the visual, or you can kind of use it in the white space around it. You know, there's, there's kind of no rules with it. I think it's open to however you wish to, to play around with these things. I might chop some of the white off after, but you can keep it on there. It's, re it's really up to, you, up to you. And I think what's nice about the square shapes is that you can kind of pivot them around 45 degrees and make them into little diamond shapes as well. So you then have a slight variation with what you're working with. Um, so I'm gonna pop. It's very intuitive. There's no right or wrong. I think that's really important. I don't have a pre-planned way of where I lay things out. Sometimes it doesn't work. And so I just peel things off um, and put them back and then start again. Um, so yeah, if you're anything like me, there might be some ripped bits of paper that come from it because you kind of change your mind, but that, that's absolutely fine as well. Someone's just said that they really love the way stickers have taken on a new meaning um, because of this workshop. Good, I'm glad. I don't know if anyone else here used to collect stickers when they were younger, when Woolworths used to be open. I remember having like hundreds of sticker books filled with like all these different things. And I think for me, it's a really kind of nostalgic moment to kind of go back to that and play around with stickers and pattern. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this slightly off white.
How's that looking? I think there's something interesting. Mm -hmm. there it's, it's also, it seems like it's quite a lot about the distancing as well between these different um, sort of elements. It's really interesting that it's almost like a constellation. Yeah, I, I guess it's, yeah, the space is important because you, I don't know whether you'd want to over cluster like the center of the image because a lot of the detail is kind of in these areas here. And so, you know, when in general the image making and when you're thinking about photography, a lot of it is about thinking about the space around something. And so I think a lot of those things still apply in this kind of process as well for me, um, in the way that things are composed and, and thought about. Does it need one more? Not sure. Maybe here. Oh, have I? Sorry about that. Oh, it's back now. <laughs> Later. I think I'm going to have to plug my phone in. <laughs> Well, that's um, perfect timing for this question that's just come in. If um, yeah. so, um, someone's just asked, does Bindi ever work like this digitally, or is it also paper and glue, um, which they love, by the way? Um, I love using craft like this. I think it, um, for me, it, it's kind of it uh, offers a sense of focusing on on what's happening. But actually, the original collages that that Inform Mountain of Salts, the body of work. This this collage workshop is inspired by our old digital collages, where everything has been done on Photoshop in order to kind of piece and move things together. I can show you a couple of examples of that if you guys would like. Yeah, definitely. Just grab them. Oh, here's my charge. Excuse me while I just plug this in so the phone doesn't die. <laughs> Been better well, it's interesting as well because one of the things that um, that we're doing with this Make for Tomorrow festival is asking the artists three questions. Yeah, you've spoken a bit about um, your feelings um, during lockdown and coronavirus and current affairs, and that seems to all really play into your work a lot. Um, and we have these three questions, which are, we can you can also answer at the end or not answer, but I'll just put them out there. Um, so it's tell us what is your struggle, um, what do you have optimism for, and what does art mean to you? Wow, they're really interesting questions. Mm. The first one was what? What, was what is your struggle? My struggle. My struggle is actually like sometimes leaving the house. Actually, I think that's really become a really big thing for me because you know I'm so I was so used to commuting to work um, every day, getting the bus, getting the tube, walking. And because I'm now working from home, a lot of that commute has been taken out of the kind of daily routine. And I think the routine itself has, um, has changed a lot where, you know, I wake up slightly later than I should, which means that my headspace isn't quite uh, in, in the right frame of mind often. And I think that then means that this idea of going out for a morning run becomes not quite the first thing on my mind that I want to do, which means I could then not leave the house and it could be several days before that happens. And I think that for me has become a real problem, like, uh, you know, about just leaving and, yeah. and, you know, going outside and getting fresh air like I'm all for having a window open but then it's like do I want to leave the house I'm not quite sure yeah. and I think that's become a little bit of a struggle for me which yeah. I need to change yeah but it's yeah it's, yeah. A, it's a hard one it's interesting how that um COVID or lockdown has almost presented us with these things that we never um had thought about to be str a struggle before but now um yeah are a bit more and we've just had a, we can go back to the other two questions, but we've had a question from a, um, one of the um, workshop participants saying, um, 
your whole screen, which I'll just spotlight back, um, is looking like a big collage artwork with all the stickers, pens, piles of words, even with your hands <laughs> at the bottom. It looks great. <laughs> Good. I, I that, that, to make some collages. I quite, I quite like this. What's happening here? Mm. And this, this, and running and running and running. <laughs> the words just there. I thought it would be good. I was just, you know, saying earlier that I can show you some of the original pieces from the Mountain of Salt series. So I've got a few examples of things that have been printed up. And this is a digital collage, which has been printed um, on paper. I'm going to raise it slightly so you can get a better view. And so what you see here, it's an eight by eight inch image where the, the original black and white sits on the back and then using Photoshop I have kind of all the text appears at the same point in every image and then the shapes are the only thing that changes and the color and the opacity. So with the collages we're making today, they're solid colors, but in the originals, I use different gradients of color in order to either hide or reveal something. Mm -hmm. And so the shapes that you see, are, they are directional in some ways. They're pointing you to certain things. And then the words are, are talking to these ideas and a lot of the initial ones spoke to a lot about what was happening with COVID. So for example, conversations around herd immunity and, and all of that that was happening and transpiring within a lot of what we were hearing and seeing. And so, it, you know, it's this provocative language that really draws your attention to the way things are, are given to us and, and how we digest them as well. So here's another, another example. Mm -hmm. And the original, I believe it's a, a guy on a ladder We're using a large format camera to photograph something right at the bottom here. <laughs> but what I've done is I've kind of turned it on its head and this, it's this idea that the, he's looking using the camera to look at himself and it's this reflection on, on you know, one's own identity, this idea that self-examination isn't enough. And this, this collage in particular was around the time where the Black Lives Matter protests were happening globally. And it's a lot about reflecting on our own actions and how we're all part of the same conversation mm -hmm. and how we all have to kind of work together in order to, you know, realize that a lot of these behaviors and things that are occurring cannot continue. And it's more of this idea that it's posting as a provocation in some ways to say that what we're doing individually, collectively as a community isn't enough. We have to be doing more. Um, and then there's, this one here, this one hasn't got a lot of detail in it. I think over time um, and age of the kind of original material, it's all faded. But what's really interesting is this idea that it's, you know, something that's been shrouded by mystery and you can kind of make out certain details. You can kind of see it's this icy residue of a glacier maybe. Um, I don't know whether you'd be able to see it, but there's that there or there's, there's this image here where part, a partial kind of part of the woman's face has been taken out. And these are the way that I found the images. I haven't altered the images other than to crop them to the same size and turn them all into black and white. That, those are the only two um, interactions I've had with the images. The rest are as I found them. And I think it's these kind of debris or these kind of details here for me that make the image even more interesting. Um, Maybe. So yeah, those are a couple of examples there. Yeah, it's really interesting to see the, the, the processes and the difference and they're very simple alterations, but they do. Um, yeah. I think that's it. It's these kind of simple gestures and, and things that we, that I work with in order to put together compositions that for me work quite well. I mean, the, the series is ongoing um, and there's around 220 collages so far that form the series. And I think a lot of it is influenced by what's happening. So, you know, between March and July, I was making a lot of those collages. And then over the summer, when things felt like there was a little bit more light and there was a little bit more space, the making element stopped. And then again, last week, the making element began to continue again. And it's a really interesting thing because I think it's this idea of, using art as a coping mechanism, using mm. art as a way of talking through some of the things that are happening in our everyday, but finding a, a way of forming that into kind of artwork and pattern and things like that. So mm. I think for me, that was really important with this work. 
it's a kind of outlet a release in some ways to figure out or deal with what's happening around us that's amazing um, so with this collage i think i'm going to move on to using a marker and i'm going to try and find a color that almost matches one of the stickers i think in some ways just to keep the, the kind of um the palette of, of tones and color quite simple. I know we've got all of this going on here. Um, any thickness of marker, I guess, is, is okay. And what I might do is I might create a border around the image. Um, and just as a way of framing. And Bindi, someone's just asked where they can see the um that series of work and I'm just going to um, type out your website yes. um, and yeah. the series is called Mountain, Mountain of Salt. Salt and I'm just going to send that to you but it's www.bindivora.co.uk slash work slash Mountain of Salt. Yes. Yeah that's the one. So there's a few on there and then there's a link to a pdf where you can see a lot of them as well on that page. So I think the thickness of the marker, I've chosen to use the kind of flat side, which is a lot thicker than the other side. And what I'm kind of doing is almost framing what's happening around the visual. Um, because I think the white space around it feels a little bit too expansive for me. So I'm going to do that. There. How's that look? I think that's interesting. Um, what I might do is take my scissors. You can try tearing as well if you would like to kind of have a rougher edge, um, is to cut around so I don't have so much white left. Um, I think. I might join the line over here and chop that bit out actually. I think that's better. Mm. I think I'm happy with that as a single composition. And I think we have a little bit more time, so I might make another one whilst we're. If there's any more questions, keep sending them. Or if there's any more ideas that you've had for words or with language, definitely keep posting them. I'm intrigued to know what you guys have picked from your magazines or your newspapers, whether it's political, whether it's provocative, I think it'll be really interesting to see. And so we've got um, about 13 to 15 minutes left, Bindi. So definitely time for another collage and it'd be really nice to see what you choose to do next. Yeah, I think I want to use this phrase and running and running and running. I think there's something quite, yeah, I think in this time, there's something quite interesting there. Um, and I'm going to use this one. The reason I'm going to choose this image is because this idea that in a, in a pandemic, we have to kind of keep going and going and going with something when actually we don't have to. I think there's, there's something within that. And I think this idea of everything stacking up and piling up is this kind of, for me, a reflection on how I feel of constantly going and going and going with something. Uh, but actually this is, this is me. This is probably how I feel. <laughs> so I'm gonna use this image and this text. And because I think this is a bit too blocky, I'm just gonna cut this out and just make them into individual words, just to give it a little bit more space when it's added to the collage to not overwhelm the images. And these offcuts that I have here, because they've got this kind of blue tone to it, you can almost cut these and use them as, as your kind of sticker references as well, if, if you don't have stickers. So yeah, any, any bits of color from magazines that you like, you can kind of use that as part of your, your collages. So, running. And you can, you can move them around on the page. You know, I know in the first collage, I kind of centered it around 
you know, paste it in the bottom corner, but you can, you can spread them out. You know, if we think about Barbara Kruger's uh, pieces that she makes, the text is often sprayed out across the whole image and not just in one designated spot. I think it makes for a little bit more of an interesting reading of it. Mm. Okay, I think I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to take my glue. We just had someone also saying, we are using the phrase new love for past treasures and image nine of the lady's hands. It feels like that phrase is applying to so many parts of my life currently and is making me stop and think about, um, about and making me stop and think about that. It feels really mindful. Thank you, Bindi. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad it's giving you kind of some ideas to think about how your everyday can be spoken through words and images. I think that's, yeah, it's important. It's almost as a way, I find this as a way of digesting everything happening around us, the good, the bad. Um, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's important. Because otherwise yeah. you can kind of run through these few months and just forget about your own emotions and your own feelings. Mm. So here is the basis. We've got already got a blue running through this, so I might not use a blue in this one. And I might go even brighter with the collage, a fluorescent orange, I think maybe. Um, uh, I said no blue, but <laughs> it is kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, <that's> nice. <laughs> um, I'm gonna keep the shapes quite small on this one because the text is so big and because there's not a lot of Kind of room within the image to play with and I think that will kind of work well so I'm going to move my big spots out the way oh there's even brighter those three are kind of curious together so again with the shapes I'm going to vary whether they appear as a square or as a as a diamond just because there's different connotations as to what they represent. This idea of a square being this structural object, I think is really interesting, especially when we consider this, this visual of what's happening in the collage of the pile of plates and the words that run across it. It kind of has this um, two-prong meaning to it in the sense of, you know, there has to be this structure and this resilience within all of us, but also, you know, sometimes we do all feel in this kind of way of where everything doesn't, nothing feels like it's joining up, I think. It's interesting as well, you were talking about the everydayness. It's nice to sort of think about the everydayness within the process and, and someone's just commented that they're going to start journaling like this. Amazing. You'll be surprised as to what you'll pick up from these things. Mm. So here we go. I think, you know, what you were saying earlier about the shapes being this constellation, I think is definitely true with, within the works, because it's this idea that these kind of bits of colour lead you and kind of form this pattern around what we're looking at and what we're seeing. I think you can be bold as well and add in on top of the image. You don't have to use the markers as a border either. That's just something that I, I like to do with the physical collages, just because it adds a bit of a frame to them, especially because the white is so big, but you can just cut the white off as well. Um, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I think. I'm now gonna just fold over the white. If you don't have scissors, you can use this scoring technique where you fold over, you kind of press it down as hard as you can with your nail or your finger. And then hopefully if the crease line has been tight enough, you should just be able to pull that without needing to use 
a ruler either, and then you'll get a nice edge. And I think the texture is quite nice on that. A little bit frayed, but I think that's okay. Do the same at the top. Someone's just commented, um, it's really interesting to see, to switch between different printed publications and seeing the words that jump out um, and it's such a variation. Yeah, I mean, I guess, depending on what you're looking at, you know, often, I think we've all seen, I see, I didn't crease it properly there. Within journalism, we've seen that often quotes or certain phrases or even on like Twitter, for example, there's words that they all pull out as a kind of, um as a as a lead within within a story that they're trying to tell um but this isn't a straight edge because i didn't crease it properly but that's okay i actually saw today that lockdown is the word of 2020 yes <laughs> colin's dictionary no yeah. <laughs> so yeah it's an interesting choice of words there i'm just gonna fold that over. oh yeah i think that one I think that's done. It looks beautiful. We've got a couple of different variations here. I probably should have done one using markers, but that's okay. I think we've got this one still here. Mm -hmm. Where I've used the kind of language on there. I then with this one thought about how the kind of circularness of the world and, and accenting that a little bit with the line there. So you can play around with it. You know, if in here I've used the markers to create a, a dashed border. So it's got a bit of a variation between the two pinks. It's mm -hmm. quite subtle, but it's quite interesting on there. Yeah. And then again, you know, playing with the darker colors, it means that the shape is hidden. So there's something to look forward or look into to see more as opposed to just the brightness of the image here. Mm -hmm. So I hope that's... Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what everyone's made. Yeah, it would be super if um, if everyone today could um, upload the any images of their work into that um, Dropbox link that's just, if you scroll to the bottom of the page, it's in the blue banner. But I think that's been, it's been really, um, really enlightening and really lovely and and thoughtful to think about words in juxtaposition with these sort of found images. And it's, it's not something that I've um, done before, but like a lot of people, I'm, I'm really, the process seems so nice and, you know, thought provoking. Um, it's been really, really wonderful. So thank you so much, Bindi. And, and like you said, I'm really looking forward to what everyone um, has done um, so far. And it's been such a lovely workshop to close um, these Tuesday afternoons on. Um, so yeah, just a huge thank you. Um, I'm going to hand over to Lucy now, who's just going to close close it up. But if anyone does want to say any last comments, I'll I'll have a go at reading them out as well. Um, over to you, Lucy. Oh yeah, that was great. That was really good. I I absolutely agree, Phoebe, about the there's something very gentle about that process and yet as those images were appearing they were so powerful and I just love the fact that you you're obviously making these considered choices but somehow the work is just create becomes its own thing becomes its own message its own story really amazing and Phoebe is absolutely right everyone we would love to see what you've made um there's no pressure if you want to carry on making right now or you want to keep working on whatever it is that you whatever it is that you're doing um tomorrow and in, in the coming days but either way do please send them in because I know Bindi you'd probably love to see what people have been up to but also we are creating a big online gallery of all the artworks that people have been making in these regular workshop sessions which we'll be launching towards the end of this week so we would love it if you're happy to share your work we would love to include whatever you've been up to in that gallery um but yeah, I just want to say a huge thank you, Bindi and Phoebe. That was just brilliant. I agree, Phoebe. What an amazing... Um, so we, for those of you, it's your first time here. We've been having Tuesday afternoon sessions with various different artists for the last ooh, two months. Um, so what a, what a high to end these Tuesday sessions on. And just to say, for those of you who haven't caught any of the Tuesday sessions or indeed any of the events that have been going on, we've had some amazing artists, amazing actors. Um, 
we everything's recorded i mean you're not recorded just what you see on your screen is recorded um, and we upload it onto our website so you can catch up if you run groups if you're an individual if you want to do it with your mum or your friend or just on your own um you can use those videos because they're really really good resources to to tap into whenever whenever you want them and i think it's just in these very very weird times these ever-changing times but these times when we're all really separated from yeah our usual routines the ones we love the things that are important to us often um, and that can be really jarring so it's so important that we can come together and i think there is no better way to do it than through these um the kind of mystery and magic of artistic process and creating together yeah it's, it's really really important and a really nourishing thing so i hope you've got as much out of this session as as we all have um just to say a massive thank you to our funders so arts council england thank you so much for funding this whole program and um, we wouldn't be here without you and also uh, nhs charities together have also made an amazing contribution um the <coughs> excuse me so sausage partnership foundation trust um their charity heads on did the fundraising for this so yeah big clap and a thank you to them and also our wonderful tech partner cog app who um make sure we're pressing all the right buttons and that, that this can arrive on your screen as smoothly as possible so they're totally fantastic but do please um come back here so we've got more stuff so um tomorrow morning very excitingly the artist mark titchener has been working with various uh uh, participants to create a really beautiful, um, unique public uh, publication um, called. Now, Phoebe, you're going to have to remind me how to say this. How do we say the name of this artwork? <laughs> okay, you just need to come back here. First thing tomorrow morning, it will be published live, so you will get the first. Get in there quick and um, and come and have a look and see what they've all been up to. It's really extraordinary. I was having a quick sneak preview last night. It is amazing. Um, and then uh, Mark will be around. So not long after eleven o'clock, um, Mark will be around doing a live conversation with Phoebe, um, just chatting about the work. So um, do join us. It would be really great if you could come along. And then. Take a look at the website because there's loads of other stuff we've got mini driver having a chat we've got sophie clements premiering a film that she's made uh who else is having richard wentworth is having chats with rupert fine yes yeah, so there's all sorts of fun stuff happening and we would just love it if you could join us but for now thank you so much for being here thank you for giving your time thank you for taking that risk of creating i know sometimes the start can be hard so well done for being here and being part of it and yeah thanks Cindy. thanks phoebe thanks everyone and we'll hopefully see you tomorrow Great. All right, bye for now. Bye. bye. bye.